Hey everyone, it's Jay here, and today I want to share three predictions I have across data science in the job market, the education market, as well as AI development over the next year. And if you're new here, I want you guys to make my next prediction come true, which means that you guys are going to like and subscribe on this video. I really appreciate it. And we'll jump into the next ones. All right, if you guys have seen my last video where I talked about the data science job market, I mostly went over the fact that over the past six months, we've been seeing this downward trend of data science jobs as well as an upward trend of data analytics and data engineering. And so my first kind of obvious prediction for the next year is the fact that data analytics and data engineering is going to continue to increase with the data science roles specifically plateauing or increasing slightly. Looking at the data, we're still seeing that a lot of these more expensive and higher pedigree positions like AI researchers, machine learning engineers, and data scientists are all kind of trending lower year over year, which represents the fact that these companies are recession proofing their businesses. For one, they're not really allowed to lower the salaries of the existing employees, nor can they offer new data scientists or new research scientists lower salaries than some of the existing employees, especially if they're at the same level. So in my opinion, what's happening on a macroeconomic level is that these companies are actually hiring for different cheaper positions and just paying lower salaries on average. The other argument that I want to make that supports my hypothesis is the fact that I believe data analytics and data engineering also support more critical business functions compared to data science and research science. If you think about what data analytics is actually doing, a lot of it is around creating dashboards and presenting reports for executives, right? And these are actually critical functions because companies rely on dashboards to actually report the results of what's actually happening in their businesses. At the same time, if you think about data engineering, it's also critical to a business because it essentially is the data infrastructure that holds up an entire business, especially if you're working in software businesses, right? This is how we collect our data. Data engineers are maintaining the integrity of the data itself. And as well, they're also supporting a lot of the dashboard functionality. And so in general, I think data science and any of the more R&D roles are going to suffer a little bit more as the recession goes on. And so my prediction is more so a prediction of the broader market. And so if we see that the recession kind of uh, plateaus or starts coming bouncing back up, then I see data science and research scientists just actually bouncing back up because these are the more expensive positions that feed into growth. Meanwhile, I think data analytics and data engineering, no matter what happens, has a huge and bright future. And on that note, we've released a new learning path for data analysts that you can check out on interview query, as well as a new data engineering learning path coming out soon. All right, my second prediction is in the education space. And it's no secret that data science education has changed rapidly over the past 10 years. Data science education has gone from basically non-existent to a booming industry in the past decade. When I first got started in data science, there was no such thing as a data science undergraduate major. But now almost eight to 10 years later, we're seeing over hundreds and hundreds of data science master's programs popping up, as well as boot camps. And my prediction in 2023 and beyond is that we're going to see a lot more pressure on these higher education programs to deliver results and be more ROI focused. And that means more transparency as well. In general, our session pushes people back into education. But at the same time, we're seeing a lot of high interest rates, which is unusual for most recessions. And so this is going to make the cost of actually going to higher education programs a lot more expensive. Another thing to consider is that most master's programs that are in the STEM field, including data science, consist of international students. From Forbes, we can see that between 50 and 82% of full-time graduate students in key technical fields are international students. And a lot of the times, these are international students that don't have as much money as US students, right? And the reason for this is the fact that a lot of international students get the opportunity to get a visa after they do the master's program to get a chance for a high paying job in the US. And historically, that was going in the right direction, right? That past 10 years, we saw data science jobs doubling or maybe tripling every single year, year over year. But now that we're seeing this recession and more of a decrease in actual data science positions, there's going to be more pressure on the universities to actually deliver results. Essentially, the recession will make it more difficult to justify the high cost of tuition, and especially the high cost of just being in graduate school if you're going to a program like Columbia or NYU in New York City that also have a little bit of shady skew statistics on their placements. I want to dive more into this in a future video, but just know that like one of the things that I'm really interested in is really finding the efficacy in different kinds of education programs, especially when it comes to higher graduate level programs. One of the biggest issues that I see is there's a lot of low quality educational programs out there that spend more money on marketing than actual education of their students. And I think measuring educational outcomes will be more and more important for the students as the next year looms forward, just because it's going to be more of an ROI focused approach towards getting a data science job. 
My third prediction in the space is around generative AI and the development of AI. So in the past year, AI has kind of exploded. GPT-3 has been out for a few years now, but it's been the rise of these new generative algorithms across chat GPT, plus the image ones such as Dolly or Stable Diffusion that have really created a new wave in terms of what's possible in the AI space. My prediction is that data scientists will actually be using a lot more of these large language models in their workflow in the near future. This means utilizing different tools around GitHub Copilot or ChatGPT to actually accomplish and produce data science results more efficiently than before. For example, the current interface of Stack Overflow and Googling different results and error messages will soon be a thing of the past as we start seeing people move over to use Copilot instead to just integrate within their natural workflow. There's also a lot of boring work in data science that can be automated. If you think about all the things that analysts and data scientists have to do, such as cleaning data, generating new columns, impute missing rows, taking data and moving it from long to wide format for graphs. A lot of that is just kind of repetitive tasks that doesn't require a lot of brain power and which a computer might be able to do a lot better for us when they can generate the code. That being said, over the next few years, the trouble will be around finding the right amount of usage in terms of using the generative AI platform to generate code for us versus figuring out you know, what they actually do well and what they do wrong. I've definitely used ChatGPT myself and found that it's sped out a lot of wrong code results. And so figuring out exactly how to use it effectively and deliver results more efficiently will be really interesting in the near future. Furthermore, another kind of side prediction I have is the fact that I believe OpenAI probably won't be the only big company to have their own large language model. If you think about how these different companies are going to enter the space, such as Google, Facebook, Apple, I'm sure all of them will be coming out with these new models in the near future. I can't really see OpenAI just dominating here especially while Google just sits by. All right, those are my predictions for 2023. I hope you guys enjoy the video. Honestly, what I wanna know is like, what do you guys think? Do you guys think I'm completely off base here? Do you guys think that I'm right on the money? Please let me know in the comments and I'd love to kind of understand your guys' opinions because as we all know, I'm using this video partly as a way to just kind of cement my predictions about the future so I can look back on it. But then again, I might be completely wrong in one or two years from now. So please let me know what you think in the comments and I'll be sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys next time.